Well, look at the incendiary language that we're seeing on some of the people who you have on your show, mm -hmm. Don. Uh, ben Ki Moon, the uh, Secretary General, speaking about how deplorable it is of Israel to murder children while they're sleeping. Now, in the final analysis, I didn't hear that kind of statement from the, from the Secretary General, even about Vladimir Putin, who may or may not have been involved in the downing of a Malaysia airliner. I didn't hear that kind of rhetoric about um, the president of Syria, Bashar al-Assad, who, who gassed 4,000 children. So why are the Jews singled out? And when people hear world leaders speaking in that manner, or high-profile celebrities, ha, uh, Javier Bardem, uh, Penelope Cruz, said yesterday that Israel's guilty of genocide. I just came back from Rwanda. 300 people died every hour. In, 19, in April 1994, the Holocaust, six million Jews died. These are real genocides. Mm -hmm. Israel is in an act of self-defense. And what we Jews feel is that the highest form of anti-Semitism is the blood libel. It's where you falsely attribute murder to Jews for which they are not responsible. If Israel's responsible for a genocide against the Palestinians, why are they not hurting anyone in the West Bank or the one and a half million Arab citizens of Israel? It's specifically these human shields that are being employed by Hamas. It, it, Fareed, if someone automatically criticizes Israel's actions in Gaza, is that automatically anti-Semitic? Anti no. I mean, I think it should be perfectly legitimate for anyone to criticize Israel, the government of Israel, as it is to criticize any government. But what is deeply disturbing about what you're seeing is the, the scenes we saw there, particularly in Europe, where people are attacking local Jewish mm -hmm. restaurants or shops. You know, f f the idea that a Jew anywhere in the world has to be held responsible or can be attacked for actions of the state of Israel mm -hmm. is reprehensible. Let, let me go more specifically about what you're saying, because we, there was a Jewish-owned business in suburban Paris being attacked and, right. and looted in Belgium, uh, a cafe posting a sign in Turkish saying, entrance allowed for dogs but forbidden for Jews. I mean, th it, you're, you're right. It, well, I mean, for all you know, that, that particular Jewish businessman might not like what the Israeli government is mm -hmm. doing. This connection between the go government of Israel and, and Jews everywhere is deeply pernicious. All right, I'm going to get your take uh, on these. These are a few tweets that have come across that we have seen. One of them says, the first one reads this, uh, we got the, these from viewers on t to this program. Does Israel see any similarities between how they treat Palestinians and how Germans uh, treated them? The second tweet reads, there is no difference on what Israel is doing to PALs, meaning Palestinians, than the Germany, than the Germany gas the Jews. And then we also received this tweet directed toward one of our Jewish guests, and it reads, why do you keep having that Zionist pig on your program? Where are the Palestinian voices? What do you make of that? Well, I get... I get tweets like that almost every single day. It's very disturbing because what you're doing is you're actually, you're victimizing the victim. You're saying that those who experience genocide, and a lot of these things that Farid is referring to in, in, uh, in France and in Germany, uh, France was the, the Vichy regime that actually collaborated with the Nazis. Of course, the Germany perpetrated the Holocaust. So you don't even allow them to feel the comfort of victimization. You say that they've actually internalized all that hatred and they are just like the Nazis themselves. Mm -hmm. That is the classic blood libel, and it's extremely disturbing. Yeah, social media making it easier to spread hate? Well, it makes it easier to spare powerful emotions of any kind. And, you know, part of the problem here is that you have a vast asymmetry of power. The, you know, Israel is much more powerful than the Palestinians in Gaza. And that asymmetry of power is visible very, very clearly around the world. And it, it you know, it, it naturally evokes a certain case out of emotion. But what is the difference for Fareed between free speech, which is protected here in America, and then dangerous opinion or dangerous rhetoric? Because we, we've seen people using Nazi propaganda like swastikas in protests here and abroad. Look, I tend to, to be more of an American on these issues in which I think free, free speech should be protected, people should be allowed to say things, uh, and I think you protect precisely the speech that is offensive and that, that, that worries you. In Europe, they have uh, different standards because Europe has had a very different past in which incendiary speech has led to terrible things, not just the Holocaust, but all kinds of pogroms. Mm -hmm. So they tend to be more careful about it. The longer this goes on in escalation and attacks against Jews, you think? Absolutely, Don. I mean, that's the history of anti-Semitism. The demonization of Jews and character assassination leads later to violence. Because if you can actually demonstrate that a subgroup is a threat to the body politic, then any violence you perpetrate against them is actually a virtue. And that's what's so disturbing here. I mean, I am actually amazed at how the, the Internet is awash in anti-Semitism. I wake up every morning to 30 or 40 tweets like the ones that were... Uh, that you received and they're directed at me, my children, my family, and it's kind of shocking. And whatever people feel about Israel, Farid made the very, uh, the very important point that what does this have to do with other Jews? But, he, but most Jews do support Israel, and we don't understand why Israel is not granted the right to defend itself or these accusations of genocide. That's particularly but, difficult. But most Jews do 